Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the North American LCS Expansion Tournament. We have Coast on your screen right now. Jez is Impaler, Chris, Mash Me, and Sheep all hanging out. They're fighting against Final Five right now in our best of five. Coming up on Game 3, they're in the middle of your man, Short Ace, playing new new team games in a row. Rux on Lissandra as well. The rest of the team doing what they can. We actually got to see the vein from Prototype, which was awesome. And a thing from that game to the other was you were saying, you know, Jinx keeps getting killed on Jinx. Yeah. It's like, how do you play safer on Vayne than you do on Jinx? Because you can go invisible. Well, I get That's For the like biggest a thing, right? second and a half. Yeah. <laughs> it actually really helps. You can play That's so much true. more elusively true. against tank closures. That's one of the reasons that Jinx actually didn't find that much play initially uh, in Korea. Because people over there highly, highly, highly value late game AD carry safety. And no matter how good you are at Jinx, unless your team is like perfectly built around it, the enemy team can kill you if they want to. That's true. And that's ended up. That's what ended up happening that game. Uh, not saying Prototype was playing perfectly and Coast was somehow killing this amazing Jinx. <laughs> he was in some bad positions as yeah. well. But it's even more punishing mm -hmm. when you are in a bad position on Jinx because there's no way out. Let's see what both teams have now coming into game three. We did see the Azir ban come out against Gate as a reaction to his Azir play in game one that got final five the win along with the rest of just great play from the team in general. Coast able to come up big on that last one and Paler a huge Lee Sin play. So we see the jungler of Coast now kind of being the way they get their advantage and the way they get in. Will he get Lee Sin again? I think not, but I don't think Shorter Ace will either. That being a big, big pickup for them. It gets banned out. So does the Vayne. We also see Nar just pretty, pretty much being taken out. I like how the target Every vans game. are flying in now. Yeah. They have either banned or picked away Lee Sin. They know they can't pick away Lee Sin because Final Five has has shown that if they get a champion that they really like, they are willing to first pick it above all else. Yes, yep. Losandra would actually be, I think, Final Five's first pick if it ends up falling through these picking ban, but. I was hoping for a bit of an 80 carry ban party, but it hasn't ruled out that way. They want to get rid of the Rumble. Ooh, Jarvan actually. Taking the Jarvan. Interesting. It really is. I mean, it does hurt Impaler. Jarvan is pretty much his favorite champion. It's something he played a lot even in past seasons, and it's one of the most respected yep. junglers on this current patch, 420. And since they'd already banned away the Lee Sin, it puts him in a bit of a bind. Curious to see if he just ends up going with Pantheon. I think he should be just fine with that pick. Could go for the Pan. He doesn't have to do it yet, obviously. Right, still has it down the line. They've already shown that Jarvan on the outside. Now, I might eat my words here now. Rule 18 picks his Jan up and they have a Jarvan. Watch him not synergize. So we'll see if this <laughs> goes down. Lissandra and Lucian picked up. Mashmi, he's been liking the Corky lot, but not afraid to resort back to that Lucian. It's really been prototype that's bring, bringing out different AD carries. So we see him fall back on something that's comfortable. Yeah. If you're around it. Final Five right now and you see the enemy team already has Lissandra, you have to be really stubborn to go Jinx. They have to pretty much go Caitlyn. It's his third AD carry. Yeah. That's this good, way, that's when the claw starts coming in, he can just net out right away and have at least a little bit of mobility, not to mention a stronger laning phase. Caitlyn one of the few who can stick with Lucian in the laning phase. The Janet Caitlyn lane is actually, in my opinion, one of the most potent 2v2 yep. lanes. And since this matchup has been devoid of lane swaps thus far, I think it's some good picks. It'll definitely tell you who, as of right now in this game, is going to be the better AD carry if a Caitlyn can out handle that Lucian in a lane, getting light sling every all, every attack well, and that, getting hit with Lightbringer as well. Yeah, that's actually one of the reasons that... Uh, Caitlyn used to be so popular if we're talking about AD carry matchups like who is the greater AD carry because if you're a good Caitlyn it almost doesn't matter how good the other dude is you're just going to outrange him you have this large pull which is yeah. your 600 plus range 650 range just and you just him. don't let the other person get there <laughs> and if they do come in you hit him with a few skill shots something you don't see a lot of Caitlyn's do as we move down and we'll get back to the picks is a lot of brush control Usually they'll just kind of focus on the lane, focus on the farm, but if you can do that as well, you become so powerful, even more in the lane. The Thresh getting picked up for a safe lane, however, for Lucian. Might see a Warwick coming oh yeah, in. That guy still exists. Press R for Impaler if he wants to get himself into this game and try to do some damage. Actually get a smile out of him there. The team is joking about. We heard Saint say, I right, Warwick's good, uh, I give it to that, but I don't like to play him. And we saw him play it the other day, so people are definitely putting it out there when they have to. 
And like you said, Jet Pantheon could be the lock-in, and then Impaler will take that. So we'll see a bit more long-range engage coming from Impaler this time. Yeah, Mash wouldn't let us know until the very last second, though. He wanted to try and troll us all these other picks. But the Pantheon will work quite well synergizing with the dives from Coast, which is why it is really important that Prototype did go with the Caitlyn. Yep. Now that they... And, and here's why it's so safe to first pick Lissandra. Basically, Coast gets a choice and a half for what lanes they want. Final Five has to lock in both of their solo laners right now. So unless both yep. of them can be good against Lissandra, they're just going to put Lissandra in that lane, and then their last pick from Coast can still be a counter to whatever Final Five has. So they almost have to pick fairly generic champions right now. It puts them in a pretty difficult spot. And it's crazy. Just like you at home, these guys, I mean, they have five people, four, I guess, if you're the person talking. But it, coming up with that last champion, sometimes you're at a blank. You're sitting there, you're like, wait a minute, I didn't expect them to pick that. What do we type in? And you're looking literally through the rest of the champions. You're like, why do none of these look familiar kind of thing? <laughs> but they find it. Yeah. Final five gets in there. It's going to be the Twisted Fate for Gate coming in. And we may actually see Rux coming in on Lulu. She's been that'll be pretty good that'll player be really on. He knows how to use it in the top Yeah. Line. It's been a while since I've seen a fed Lulu, but when you get there, it's really potent. One thing I've actually, to jump off the point you were just making, yeah. all the pro teams that I've seen now just type the champion name in, like right away, and then basically, they're so automatic at it, they just lock it in, which made a really strange situation early last year in OGN, because when you're typing in, Annie was really big. At the oh, start yeah, of the yeah, year. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, people would type in Annie to ban, but the first character of it was the same as Anivia, and they were so automatic at just typing in a character and clicking the champion. I remember that. There were so many accidental Anivia bans. And if they didn't call it, there's no remake. Yeah, it was it was ridiculous. <laughs> so we see it be a gangplank. Let's see it. Bank plank it. It's not going to happen. There's the Ari. Like I said, against Curse Academy, it was Soraka, Nar, and Ari banned against Coast. The Ari is a huge pickup for Jezus. He's able to put up big numbers, and he makes it. I, he just makes Ari look so easy when he's spirit rushing. He throws like nine orb of deception. I'm like, I only get yeah. one of those cooldowns when I'm playing. How do you do it? It's just such a good wheelhouse champion. And it's him. the one assassin that Jezus can play well. Yep. So it fits this comp very well they actually have a very similar team composition to what final five brought into the last game uh, with less peel for their more mobile AD right. carry but as far as not really having a strong front line and having double assassins from the solo lanes that's what they've got so now for final five are they going to do that last trade Ever. Nothing else is important right now. Whatever I was about to say is now irrelevant because we might see a Lulu jungle. No, that... it's they. They're okay. Maybe we. Was will. there a trade bug? Do we have to remake or is there going into the game? I think we're going into the game with the Lulu jungle. I believe we're going. Shorter Ace has a smile on his face. It looks like they're ready for this. They're not calling for any communication, any remake to the ref. So I believe we're getting into game right now. We are loading Shorter Ace, Lulu in the jungle. This is going to be a very interesting game. Now, obviously, if you're a top laner, you know Jarvan works in the top lane. He's got the percent damage on his uh, Damascian yeah. hit for his passive. But, like, this is weird in general. All right. So, let's F5 here. Let's, we have to, let's refresh. We have to re-talk about these team compositions because a lot just changed when they did not trade what? the Lulu to the top lane. What? First off, it really changes the dynamics of what Chris was bringing. I mean... I don't know if he would have been able to change his rune page in time if he's going for armor or magic resist. There he is. He has 29 armor, so he seems okay in that respect. He actually doesn't have any MR to start the game on the Sandra. But, all right. We just, came from, we just came from IM. We watched Unicorns of Love. Yeah, we saw Twisted Fae. We saw, we saw TF Jungle. KO, we saw Kale Jungle. All that good stuff. Same theory <laughs> should apply right. for Lulu. Keep your distance. Use the mini leash range of the jungle monsters. Stay at just the right point so you can auto attack the them. Soft reset. And they won't hit you in those soft reset. It's very difficult to pull off. Build the devour. Do an on hit Lulu. Use your attack speed. Abuse the damage from help picks. Wow. It theoretically fits the same bill as a jungle TF where he does have an on hit proc mm -hmm. that can synergize with the devour and works very well with attack speed. We're actually kind of racking our brains when Kikis was at I am San Jose thinking of, okay. If Kale Jungle works and TF Jungle works, right. what other weird junglers can fit this exact set of specifications? For Kale, it works because she has some good on-hit procs and some magic damage that scale with a Devour. TF works for the same reason because of stacked deck. And actually, 
Lulu could work too, only because Pix works on every auto attack. And I can't wait for this mind game to happen. A summoner has disconnected. Ah. Yeah, it's just a minor pause. All right, so we're going to get that set up real quick. I am super excited to see yeah. what happens here. If if he's going to... So first off, I'm feeling he's going to be safe in the jungle, right? Because you, you're you going to have a walk-in gank. Whimsy is quite yeah. a bit of time, so that'll give you speed. But once that speed's over, if you miss the Glitter Lance, your gank's over. Yeah, I'm not sure how potent his ganks would be. It's not like he's going to be a Twisted Fate and can just flash gold card to a level 2. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be as cheesy as that. that. For those of you that haven't seen I Am San Jose. Uh, so silly. I'm not going to say spoiler alert because it was a week ago. Yeah, you should know. You should know. But uh, those cheesy junglers can really throw teams for a loop. And more so than that, I think the big reason the jungle Twisted Fate worked in Unicorns of Love versus TSM's case right. is because it made a really lopsided lane matchup that was completely unexpected. That game saw a LeBlanc beat up a Zareth. In the Hard. mid lane. Yeah, and here we expected a Lulu to be against Lissandra. So they're like, all right, we're going to run these double assassins. It's really on Rux here to see how well he can punish Lissandra. I, I have the misfortune of actually not being really familiar with this lane. I haven't seen too much Jarvan top, other than the fact that I've seen him be very successful in other matchups. He has a lot of early damage. And if he can avoid the poke, I'm trying to think about this lane, if he can avoid the poke, he should be able to stick with Chris. I mean, one of the big things Lissandra can do is she can root you with a W. Right. Jarvan's pretty much the only champion in the game who can dash through a root because his EQ combo is not tied to that right. since it's two abilities. And he might be able to stick on Chris and actually finish him down in a few different ways. So I'm, I'm excited about multiple things there. We I've, always end up talking about Final Five. I want to give Coast more credit, <laughs> but do cooler stuff. <laughs> Final Five is doing the weird thing. I feel like that the Jarvan... Uh, lane would go in his favor actually as well. Yeah, if I think you, it should. Especially if you get the early level two, you get a little bit of magic resistance. That first hit is so dominating and it usually changes your opponent's mind in the fight because you take off however much percentage of their health and then you can just keep whacking away at him and he gets pretty good scaling attack speed. So yeah, it's painful. And I think one of the big reasons we don't see much Jarvan in competitive play is in order to play the lane successfully, he has to play so aggressively that he's vulnerable. And we may yeah. end up seeing that in this game. Impaler has been so focused on bottom lane, he might have to switch his focus to top this game. A hook onto Prototype, not gonna do too much. Nice Storm Shield, actually does not allow any damage to pass, but now this is Sheep doing what he can to eat some of those biscuits, get himself back to health, and we see Shorter Ace making his way through the jungle now. So he's gonna start at the Krugs. He's gonna go ahead and get himself that stun attack. Stun attack? I mean, stun attack, rather? Based on his Heavy juggling of the Krugs there, he took almost no damage. Yeah, he still has both of his health potions. He's taking a little bit of damage here, but obviously it's it's actually really hard to pull off these soft resets time and time again. You can see how he doesn't want to run all the way back because then it will start, start healing. If it just starts running a little bit, he can reset it back. It's not easy, and he's taking a little bit of damage here and there, but the stun that he's getting every yep. fifth hit with the Krugs as well as the on-hit damage is allowing him to clear these things. And he's he's doing all right. He's not going to be able to pull off an early gank, but he's going to be able to clear the jump. Right. If he can't get the early gank, hopefully his pickup of a Twisted Fate, once it hits level 6, can counteract the global presence. I'd say quasi-global presence of the Speaking of early here. ganks, though, and Ruck's trying to play aggressively. Ouch. I think he's waiting for level 2. He wants him to EQ in, yeah, and yeah, then he's yeah. going to Pantheon it. Or even just to Q for harass, because then he can't jump away. Let's see what he decides to do. He's burning a lot of time. There's one. He'll he wants him back. to be more. He wants him to get yeah. harder. It's six seconds before he can do that again. The gank's there. They have a bit of crowd control. Yeah, it looks go. like he's too close to the turret. A little bit of crowd control on the top lane. Rux keeps himself alive. As you can see, the bottom's trying to pressure as well. With the vision now that that's happening, it might give Prototype and Rule 18 a little bit more safety to go harder here in this bottom side. Shorter Ace is going to go up top. I don't know if he's playing a little too slow on the reactive pace. He could be still farming his jungle, so he's wasting a bit of time here. Yeah, I agree with that. I think it was really good play by Rux to mm -hmm. not commit to a point that he can be ganked by Pantheon, knowing the strengths and weaknesses of the Jarvan matchup, right? right? He knows that he's supposed to be able to bully Chris if he plays aggressively, and he's expecting Impaler to be smart enough to try and shut that down. So he double mind game, stayed passive, and managed to burn a lot of Impaler's time. So he's going to save Smite for Blue instead of going for the Grom, using that for Blue. Keep himself a little bit healthier here. 
And now possibly an engage towards the top of the lane, or at least a ward for top side. He's trinkets down, so this is going to be for the stick. Actually, just going to back. He doesn't feel like he can get any pressure. Chris too far back. So the beginning jungle, 12 to 8. In favor of Lulu right now. We saw him paler top side, which is why he's a bit of a camp down. But he's actually going for bottom as well. So he really wants to get somebody going for us before he really worries about his own jungle here. Trailblazer's finished, so he's not going to have trouble once he does head back in. So he doesn't find anything there either. Yeah. Impaler wasting a lot of time early on Pantheon. Absolutely. I I don't know what he is expecting of this jungle Lulu, that he's trying to force these <laughs> ganks so heavily. He's like, so I got a gank early. I'm against a Lulu. I'm, I'm not sure. Right, right. No one is really sure what to do against a Lulu as of now. I'm, I'm still not even sure if he's going to go for the Magus Enchantment or the Devour. I expect the Devour on the Jungle Lulu, but maybe it's AP Jungle Lulu. They want to give more shields to Prototype. That seems to be a pattern with their team comps. True. I think Ruck's safe for jumping in. A little bit more HP. We will have to see. It's all going to unfold before us here within this game. I'm actually excited. So only 500 gold lead with just pretty much what's happened here in the lanes. 6 CS to the top lane. Almost double the CS here in this bottom lane. So you can see Prototype putting that Caitlyn to work. His third best AD carry, but still good enough to really control the lane. Rule 18 getting way too far ahead. This could be first blood. That's Relentless Pursuit into the fight by Mashmi. And that was Prototype's exhaust. So the synergy between the AD Whoa. carry there and the support. Glitter Lance goes down. One last shot. It's not a headshot proc. And he's also out of mana for the Peacemaker. Very close. Chief yeah. gets out by the skin of his teeth there. Very, very close gank right there. All started because Rule 18 ended up getting ganked. A surprisingly effective yeah. gank by Lulu. It looked like they were far out of range, but because he was able to land that Glitter Lance, they ended up being able to burn a substantial number of summoner spells. They're actually even in summoners in that bottom lane now. Just the 80 carries with Flash remaining. Impaler using his time wisely. Gets a nice ward over at blue and almost finds work. Gate. Like, that would have been perfect, but Gate's like, I actually don't want to go all the way over there. I'll put my ward here. This could be it, though. Oh, the flash and the charm hits from long range. That's exactly what they needed and to get Jazz's going. Even better. And to get Impaler going, right? He got yes, a lot of so true. He got a lot of experience for champion kills. And that's one of the reasons Pantheon is so potent in this jungle. He stays safe in the jungle. He doesn't clear super fast, but it always allows him to be at high health for yep. those combat times. And despite two little bits of wasted time, right. he has the Juggernaut, he gets the nice gank down, and starts a little bit of control for Coast. Indeed, level five now to Shorter Aces level four, who did have that CS lead, so that bit of time pays off for Impaler. Doesn't actually have to use a man drop to get things going for the team, which is even better. Anything pre-six is just a bonus. Chris, back and forth, that's the Cataclysm. He's forced to flash out, so Rux definitely has the upper hand and just the front end damage. But now that Impaler sees that, he wants a piece of this top lane, too. Yeah, an interesting top lane matchup that we saw, but it's the Impaler camp that is finally coming. And oh. he uses the Q at just the wrong time! Oh dear, that was painful. The flash in as well. They're going to solidify this one, and from one lane to the next, Impaler starts to get things going in multiple lanes. The Achilles heel of the Jarvan solo lane is all of your <laughs> skills are tied to your only form of safety. He just yeah. goes for a random Q harass. But because the lane had been pushed, Impaler got into the best brush for a jungle to get into in that top lane. Lissandra Pantheon is a scary combination as far as ganks go. And even with the quick switch ups that Final Five pulled off, yep. they don't seem to be catching Coast very off guard. And it's a great job Coast has started to do. It seems like they've slowed down their play a bit and are starting to really see the tendencies of Final Five. They're able to make these plays look like they had them planned way ahead of time. Rux is using his abilities here. Let's act on this. It just looks like it's lane to lane oh, right man. now. Very textbook here for Coast, but very nicely done. They rip out a page of their book and Final Five gets a kill for themselves. This was a nice Roam by Shorter Ace to get himself in position behind the turret, even coming through a ward here, we can see. They still finalize the kills onto Coast, making sure that they know Final Five's still in the game. Yeah, meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Final Five was completely decimating Mash and Sheep, and small parts of that earlier gank from Shorter Ace, but you look at that CS, 23 difference on the 80 yeah. carries and a turret falling down. 
Impaler needs to be in three lanes at once, and now he's coming to the dragon. Oh, Gates right in the middle of the dragon pit. Ill-advised spot to be on the Pantheon oh, man. No, he steals, oh, it he too. steals it as well. He's still alive. He's taken so many hits, he actually has time to look around and see what else he wants. The Monsoon only to save Rule 18. Rux comes in, but at what cost? It looks like it's actually going to be Mashmi picking this one up. They actually don't hit the piercing light on that. It's forced to be picked up by Chris. But that was such a good fight by Coast, and Final Five kept filtering in. Such a great fight by Impaler is what it really seemed yeah. like. Dude, he yeah. is Let's playing again. so well these last two. Perfect game on Lee Sin and now this. So, he's ganked two lanes for kills. He's zoned four. He zones the team right there. He waits for Shorter Ace to get hit by the Dragon. I don't know why Shorter Ace is still taking hits, <laughs> because he got so low. Was not able to steal it, because Pantheon honestly has better execute damage on the Dragon. Spear yeah. plus Smite gets the finish just like that. And... Sure, he ends up falling down for himself, but not before 100% kill participation, a dragon wow. steal, and all of their early game pressure. Big moves, and Paler using the momentum from the other. Whoa, Gate going crazy on this one. Does he have the play? Rule flashed over the wall. He is going to force the flash as well, but we can see Final Five not afraid to start making moves, but this opens up the rest of their map. They got to be careful how much they commit to all this. Now we also have Impaler in the mid lane. They're going to get a blue to lose mid turret, which opens up their side of the map greatly. Yeah, I think Jesses is okay with this trade as well yeah, as the rest absolutely. of the Yeah, Impaler really, really trying to take over here and a little bit of questionable decision making again coming out from Final Five. Flashing for a Janna shield for the extra damage on a gank. Yeah. Doesn't seem right. They end up trading blues anyway, as long as losing the turret. And I think they were just trying to overcompensate for that disastrous dragon fight. It ended up costing me the more. Well, we can already see Coast feels like they can add a bit more pressure. Impaler taking the Gromp out for himself. They were already, already able to clear out a bit of that blue on that side as well. And we can see Gate has Jazz's blue right now. They just stole that off as they try to put damage on the mid lane. Coast, however, collapsing a lot better to save these lanes. They've only lost the bottom turret now. They've been able to take out two. Still waiting for Mashmi to get down and take that one out by himself, which would draw down Prototype. Let's see where Impaler is. Doesn't look like he's actually seen right now, so we could actually see Coast going for a take in this bottom lane. It may not be safe for Prototype to go. Yeah, they know the Twisted Fate alt is down as well, yep. so it's fairly safe for Impaler to alt in. But with that being said, like, Caitlyn's a really hard cookie to crack, yep. especially with Janna in the game and a Lulu jungle who can appear at any moment. This could very easily get counter gank if they overcommitted them. Uh-oh. Shorter Ace. He is going to get hit up. He's probably the one that has the best ability to live out of that situation, though, so not too much trouble. Trade an Ace in the hole. Mash me. Only has Doran's Blade, so he's going to be able to get that health back ever so slowly. So Ace in the hole down. They lose a little bit of pressure on the turret. We still see Impaler's heal. Now we see Jazz is coming down. This is a dangerous spot for Final Five to be in. Yeah, they do not have the upgraded jungle item on Shorter Ace, by the way. We'll get to that in a bit. He's not going to Bower. He's oh. going to go Magus. So now we have time to give yeah. the jungler update. Not going as well as you would hope <laughs> when you end up it's pushing a, a funny jungler like that. Trying to gank the top one, though, to make something happen. Boy, do they commit hard. One after the other. An escape artist that he is. Chris will be able to make it out of this. Slows oh, down no. the flash. No. So inside their heads, they want these kills almost too much. We just saw Rule 18 do the same thing to solidify a kill. They, they need these flashes in fights. It's such an advantage to have, and they're losing those edges that would really put them on top here. 2,000 gold behind, you're going to need your flashes when you're going into these fights, most likely. Yeah, and out-leveled across the board. Yeah. Look at the solo lanes. Chris and Jezzes are level 10. 10. To 8? Rux My and word. Gate are level 8. Not only is it a 2,500 gold advantage, and a dragon buff. There's a huge amount of gold, just an experience that they're losing right now as well. Really an early game control match here by Impaler. And when you're a double assassin team that gets ahead of the enemy, it is really hard to come back. Gonna get very, very scary. You can see Coast even freely able to move in and clear out pink wards here. Tried to clear that one out, and he's like, where'd it go? It got placed on the other side of the map. Sorry, you don't get the gold. So he actually doesn't get to take that one out. Gets confused. Gate in the mid lane, just pushing minions, doing what he can to keep it safe. Oh no, Rux actually 
going into his own death here in the top lane. Throws out a little bit. Whoa, didn't want to do that too much. Actually thought he had Impaler under the turret. I was wondering what he was doing for a second. Yeah, it looked like Impaler had a little bit of a misclick there yeah. on his final spear that was going to execute. Either way, he blocked a lot of turret shots with his passive and was able to get yet another kill. So Rux's Jarvan the fourth adventures aren't working out very well. Yeah. Really, Final Five is now probably just trying to build around their Shot Caller in a bit prototype right now. They're trying to group up with as many protectors as they can. Let's see if Gay can finally get a kill here. There's the gold. Picks it up with the wild cards. Actually has the Flash and Ghost. You can see a lot of times from TFs. Short Rays taking the Orb Deception. Both sides. Pick it's out. prototype. Actually gets baited into this one. It looks like he may be able to get out of line. Oh, no! You should not have turned around. But he didn't know that. We could see it. Yeah, the orb came out of nowhere. That's uh, a fog of war. You cannot see around corners right there. But Jess is, has the movement in his mind. So Guessed close. where he was going to be. Lands both procs of that orb, the magic damage and the true damage. And with one extra spear, that was enough to finish him down. Prototype probably should have stuck with the rest of his team yeah. so he could benefit from the Janna move speed and the Lulu move speed plus shield if she decided to give it to him. But... As we've seen too many times, Prototype kind of does his own thing occasionally. That's true. The team itself is losing, and they just lose their second drag. Positioning can sometimes get him into trouble. That one he got pulled into a little bit by the hands of Shorter Ace. Did not come out alive. Rux in the mid lane, getting that pushed. Good control by Final Five right now, at least on the waves, but it's not stopping Coast from getting into their jungle, from denying Shorter Ace a little bit more here and there. He's been finding waves in the mid, 56-42, finishes up his... I believe that's the Magus, and he is going it for the Mobility Boots, because he did have the Fiendish Codex yeah. earlier. So he gets finished up on that, and it looks like he's kind of a playmaker facilitator for the team. That's the hope. I mean, it's almost like a secondary support. They're trying yeah. to... I think they're trying to cheat a Lulu solo lane out of the jungle. I don't know why Lulu's lane is so strong anyway. I think it was meant to be an element of surprise, but it just has not worked right. very well against Coast. In theory, the team composition actually does work very well for Final Five. They have two really powerful supports to make Caitlyn do more damage. You have a safe AD carry against a double assassination comp that can't yeah. be assassinated, and a strong initiation when you get ahead with Twisted Fate as you are the fourth. But like all team compositions, nothing works if you fall behind in the early game and get snowballed on. And that seems to be what's happening against Coast here. Always easier to say than do. Yeah, just wild growth the TF after Izanya's and then Cataclysm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It doesn't happen like that. You like to. You like to think of that when you create the composition. Always harder to put into action. Top turret now going to go down. Blue card for the most damage. Gets more onto that. And it looks like they will pick up their second turret of the game. Oh, actually, he's going to be chased down. Chris actually took the claw quite early. They should be able to get this lock. No. I, why? No. It's, it was an attempt, right? Yeah. If he stopped in the brush to clear the ward, maybe. He, did, made it. he didn't have the angle to escape. <laughs> right. So he was hoping right there that a pillar and Chris were trying to cut him off and would not check oh, in that Oh, they go brush. forward, you're right. Yeah, because he'd used the vision ultimate so early, they thought, hey, maybe he just wants to see where we're coming yeah. from. But valiant effort, not too hard to stop. Impaler, of course Impaler, with the smart play, doing the studious thing, checking the brush, still 100% kill participation, and a ton of map control. They're going for another turn. So now this becomes super tough as long as we don't break into a fight here. How do they start to push those turrets if you're going to get man dropped on? If somebody can close a thousand range on you and being anywhere is pretty much yeah. not safe. I mean, we saw their attempt last game. They just kind of scatter and yeah. start doing yeah. really questionable things to try and pull a bunch of people to chase them. But yeah, this composition from Coast is more punishing than the last one. Better catch potential. Pantheon of the Sandra, fantastic at chasing. Even Ari excels in yeah. these type of chaotic games. So, they're in worse shape this game than they were last game. And last game, they're in pretty bad shape. Such a good lockdown, and they're using it so well, making all the kills just flow in easily. Nine to four as we're coming up on 20 minutes into the game. Two dragons right now in the hands of Coast. That'll be up within a few minutes here. A minute and 40 for Baron to be on the map. And that was actually something the teams went for quite hard last time, which this time the composition of final would be able to handle the wave pushing a little bit better. Chris almost got hit himself in the sore position there, trying to go a little too tunneled into that fight. But the whole team of Coast now pushing down the mid lane. They're not going to have mash here, so they have to be careful how far they go. But it doesn't even look like Final can really put up a fight here. Yeah, one benefit that Chris actually gets, because he was laning against Jarvan, is he gets to build the Zanyas first. So he has a lot of potential and vulnerability 
in a fight, Gate decides to do the safe Ooh. teleport. Yeah, it looks like Final Five is going to try to set up a siege here because they know Chris is loaded. Looking at Chess's, he does have that Deathfire Grasp made up, so he could zero somebody out if he gets the right chance to do so. Oh, that's what I mean. That wasn't one of the times, but Rule 18 being the guy that has to walk out. I mean, all sports do it, but such a somebody dangerous position him, to be in. Yeah, at least somebody. Yeah. You know, side by side, buddy, there. Yeah, but they just can't risk that. Knowing that's, that Lissandra hits an AoEs. That's true. And anyone can get caught by Hooker Charm. Left to his own divide, doing what he can. And there it is. Mashmi actually does the same thing, trying to get up Whoa. ahead, and Rox takes him down. Chris is there to stop it, Big but that's the wild growth coming in. Now he's huge, a force to be reckoned with. One more Q, and they're going to be able to lock this one down. Short Race actually picks one up for himself in the jungle, finally, and it is a support battle back and forth up here. Jess is coming around. He does have not Spirit Rush up, actually, but he does have the blue buff, so he can put out crowd control and a bit of damage yeah. during range. Off the screen, Jess's erased prototype, which yeah. has really swung the dynamic oh. of this fight. Now Pantheon's trying to close in. Oh, that would have been a fantastic Thresh Lantern, but Jess's takes it instead. I thought that was actually going to go Impaler on the Grand Skyfall. So Coast able to push him back. But they do take down Chris. Very nicely done. Let's take one more look at that as it was a bit of a scattered yeah. fight. But here we see and Jez it, as a prototype. It was very surprising when everything happened. Prototype gets destroyed. But the initial catch by the rest of Final Five was pretty good too. I mean, that's the beauty of the yep. Janna and the Lulu. Whoever they decide to shield hits like a truck. Not only do they get the help picks damage, they also get the Eye of the Storm AD yeah. damage from Janna. And they're really hard to kill. So like... There are still positives on this Final Five team composition. <laughs> I keep harkening back to it because it's done so poorly. That was some of the positive, as well as some of the negative when you don't have the shields on the person who's right. getting assassinated. <laughs> as Prototype fell immediately to death. Well, he's always by himself. That time it actually paid off. Causing the chaos wasn't something that Coast could really bring together, and we saw Impaler. If it wasn't really Coast initiating the fight, they have a hard time getting themselves back into it, so it's an advantageous position for them. Final five picking up a bit there. Looked like we said the gold a little deceptive. It's not telling us everything in the game. Coast still rocking those two dragons right now that make them a little bit more powerful and really make these fights scary right now for final five. Mm -hmm. Still plays to be made. They can still gate around the map. They can still put pressure in different places. But you're also looking at that from a Pantheon and Chris on teleport so they can work the map just as hard. Coast looking to pick up a third dragon here. This. Just can't go uncontested every time here. Final needs to put up a fight. They just can't, though. It, the vision control it is hurts. so lacking for a lot of them there. Yeah. The one thing you do when you don't have vision is you force the team to come to you. That's why they're pushing mid lane and they're trying to make Coast collapse, but they at least have to be together. Now they're split up again. They don't want to be split up against this team. Oh, he's got enough mana to cause a lot of trouble. And the blue buff only making him that much stronger. Rule 18, he'll be able to get out of his passive movement speed. Uh, they're all backing different places. He gates back to the same spot. Gate just gates. Gates the safety. Looks like everybody's going to be fine and dandy on this one. Uh, they're a do -si -do and quite hard right now. Where's he going? He's going to go second tier. And Here comes Jesses again. That's going to be the charm up. They take down Prototype. He can't be safe anywhere. He was actually in the right position that time, but they made it wrong. If you scatter in big. 15 different ways, one of them is probably going to run into the enemy, and that's eventually what happened right there. Chris now gets the catch, and it's going from bad to worse. It is a gigantic game of cat and mouse. Coast is the cat. All of Final Five is the mouse. There are five mice running around right now. They found a few. They're able to get the cheese, the stinky inhibitor. It's going down. 12 to 6, 23 minutes in. A 5,000 gold lead as Coast starts to take even more control of this game. And it looks like they've solidified this one. We could be taking it on to a game point one if they're able to keep this one going. We've seen, like we said, yeah. it's, oh, it's over. It's not over till it's over. Anything can still happen. You're right. I love the mouse analogy, though. It's, it's five <laughs> diminishingly threatening mice that are just running around in every different direction. But just one big cat coming at you. Jeez. But it's not over till it's over. Yeah, 4,000 gold. That's one thing about these dragons not giving gold is unless you're really smart about where you go and don't make mistakes, yeah. you can lose control of the game very easily. Oh, final five. This is scary. I don't think they can get it. So much damage onto Rux. They don't have a super true tank coming out of the jungle right now. He only has a Hydra on him, so that Baron is just shredding through everyone right now. 
Rule 18 still trying to put that locket of the Iron Solari together, which would really help against this double AP team. They already have the Aegis, which obviously helps, but that rest of the shield would really stop these finalizing kills that Coast is putting on the table. There are only six kills to 12. Not as much as a bloodbath as we've seen. That respect to the team still being given. You got it. Yeah. So there's not a lot of damage that comes out of that. Yeah. I don't think we're going to see an explosion of Jungle Lulu in solo queue like we saw at Jungle TF after Kiki has pulled that out to amazing effect. Looks like Shorter is having some trouble in the jungle there. I think when he's played this in the past, he gets really far ahead because the theory still works, right? He can clear the first jungle. Right. His Glitterlands ganks are potent, and then he's this powerful AP Lulu that can push lanes. Yeah. But if their sieges aren't working with Caitlyn, he's then relegated to the jungle. And because he's gone AP, it's really hard for him to clear these more and more powerful jungle camps as the game progresses. Right, you're only clearing on cooldown. Yeah, and it costs him a lot of mana too. Yep. Which is why he's going towards that Athenes, which is the unbuffed Athenes, remember? So it's not yeah, yeah. giving him that much mana regen on this 420 patch. Tough decisions. Like we said, that is two-sided though. It could have gone great for him, but right now, the passive way the Final Five has been playing, really a passive jungler, wasn't something that was gonna put them in the lead this game. Rux takes down the top turret. He goes Cataclysm all over Chris's face. It looks like they're gonna be able to get out of that one with just about the same amount of health traded, but a lot more is going down in the bottom lane right now. Prototype doesn't need too much mana to beat Caitlyn, so he's safe for now as long as he has an escape and they're able to stave this off for now. No Baron buff on Coast to make these minions huge. So you can see how much of a fight Final Five here can put up. They have good wave clip and good disengage for the base. Yeah, they just need to wait for their opportunity. I think it's pretty smart that they have rocks off in the top lane. It really diminishes the ability for Coast to dive. If Lissandra came in with the Pantheon under the turret with this type of gold lead, I think they could Oof. just end the game. Uh, but Rux, knowing that he burned Chris's ultimate in the last fight, is looking for another all-in. Or if not, just to cut the minion wave. But this team down here has to be able to clear minions. Nicely done. Well, you can see there's damage on the turret. So it's not impossible for Coast to take that one down if this side split were just to be played out the way it is. And it looks like Rux is actually going to stick with it. Pretty strong headed on this one, and he will not decide to go around. And it's going to be Chris clearing out Baron, actually. Finds a ward. Very nice sweep. Gets that one down. Chooses the right position. Maybe he saw it earlier. And he's actually going to get crab control by himself. Getting that crowd control for a bit extra damage. They lock it down. They are nice. visible, however. And Jez is dead yeah. back. So they're actually going to be able to get themselves in the right spot for this. And Paler's the only one that wants to set up some D, I guess. It's a rather early Twisted Fate ultimate because that's one of their only ways of scouting the Baron now yeah. that they've lost ward control. So at the very least, that Twisted Fate ultimate gives them a window to place wards down but they didn't get very good wards down no. with the TF ultimate. So now, Coast has a lot of control. One thing that we need to mention as well on this 420 patch and why Coast has this big lead but doesn't necessarily close it that well is the inhibitor and Nexus turrets are just so hard to take down now without empowered minions or a gargantuan yeah. lead. And because Final Five has picked up a kill here and there and actually killed the minion waves fairly well, they're keeping themselves pretty close. So now it's Coast's job to either control the Baron or the continued assault on Dragon and close the game by forcing Final Five out because of the fear of the fifth Dragon. I don't think it's going to be too long until we see that. Obviously, 10 seconds until Dragon number four. And we'll always have, only have to wait another six minutes before they get what they want for that three minute buff. The aspect of the Dragon, rule 18. Ward by that yourself. That was his first death of the game. It was. Against a heavy assassination team, but they weren't even in position to contest Dragon. Dang. So it's not important to get wards on it in that specific period of time. It's something that comes after so many games. You will realize when it is not worth to even see people do things. No. Because seeing them do stuff that you can't stop doesn't matter. And so true. he was trying so to get true. vision. <laughs> Definitely start to set something else up. Put something else on your plate. Playing reactively to the team that's winning is not something that's really going to get you back into the game. you got to do something better than they're doing it. And it makes it hard right now, especially the fact that they have so many mobile champions, so many ways of starting the fight from long range and just strangling you instantly in that fight. Again, Coast heads up towards Baron. They're doing a little bit of cleaning there. Let's see if they can draw out Final Five.
just like he said, Jat, they did get them out of the woodwork here. Rule 18 first, a Monsoon is off, but Rux actually not able to close in with his gap closer because everybody gets blown out. They are now forced out of this one to disengage. Jess is going hard. That's the Cataclysm, but I think he may be able to live through this one. Not enough damage can come from the cooldowns of Rux, along with the auto attacks. Another grab coming in from Sheep. He takes the Blitz. He takes the Thresh. Something that continue the fights and make the plays for the team. He helps do so along with Chris coming up for the kill on that one as well. Now 18 to 6. They finalize that ace at 30 minutes in. Big momentum gainer there for Coast. They already had control of the game, but now they have a stranglehold yeah. on it. They should be able to clean up this Baron pretty quick. That's kind of the thing they needed to really push this game to a conclusion. Baron buff, they're already sitting on four dragon stacks. So if they can't make something happen with the Baron, the dragon would be the next logic to take for them. It's kind of the second game in a row they've had absolute objective control on Final Five here, and they have to feel really good about that. A much stronger game from Coast. It's kind of like all the L LCS experiences coming together. They know where to move before this, when this is happening, if the lane's being pushed. I mean, yeah. you look at this fight, and it was, the, here's the Janna and the Jarvan not synergizing a little bit. It was a really sloppy fight by yeah. Final Five. Rule 18 in particular went a little bit crazy that time. Flashing in on Janna after he had just died, especially when he is needed to help people like Rux, who actually had three low health people that fight had extended later on. Yeah. It's something that Final Five definitely could have played a lot better. I didn't see flaws from Coast's gameplay in that one at all. That's why you see a clean ace. But they more so capitalized on the mistakes of Final Five. And just look what Impaler can do by himself. Blocking to the Iron Solari, keeping him alive. But a 2v1 there with Storm Shield on prototype. Basically now another BF sword in his inventory when he gets that. Not really taking like him that. down. I liked how... The quick stop. They, they've seen <laughs> too many games. They're just like, I got you, man. They're just like, all right, everyone stand still. We know we're blocking the line right now. If nobody moves, nothing will go wrong. Quick flash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's when Chief just flashed to the side the last second. That's the inhibitor retaken. Oof, there's they, the empowered minions. They need to get these waves going, actually. Uh, ooh. So close, dude. There's the Baron buff. Making Coast a little bit bigger. Still Rux in this top lane. I don't know against four Baron members. Maybe a little bit more useful along with the team, but if Chris can get this wave up here as well, it's going to be so much pressure with the Baron minions. Coast going to back with their buffed up Baron recall. They're going to be back to lane quite quick here. I'm pretty sure they all now are sporting somewhere near home guards, at least two or three of the members, so they can get back into the fight. They're not wasting any time at getting more wards down and Full control here. Coast looking to close this one out quite soon. Final five going to have to figure out what they can do. I like the picks coming into this game. They tried something different. They weren't just settling on something they thought they could get a win with. They said, if we can win with this, maybe we'll break the mentality of Coast. But not working out so well that time. Coast was able to bring out a few picks of their own. Like we said, that Ari was going to be big for Jesses. He's been able to play it well. 408, and now move on to the bottom. Inhibitor turret once again with that Baron buff. They're definitely playing this one a little bit conservatively once they have this huge lead. Yeah, that no, it's true. Yeah, but mainly it was about it was about minion wave management. It's taken them a really long time to get these minion waves in the right spot. Now they go. That's the hit that they needed straight under the turret. They do try to take down one more. They're going to get it. That's going to be three right in the start of the fight. It's Rao on the gate. The charm just missing his cape. They're going to be onto the Nexus turrets. It could now be two games in favor of Coast in this best of five as they just barrel down. Now one Nexus turret left. They've done a great job here. 32 minutes, four minutes quicker than the previous matchup. And you can see the final touches being put on the Nexus. Actually quickly surrendered in there coming in from final five as the game was already over and a victory for Coast. And that's two games in a row where they nearly made it to five dragons. Just absolute control yeah. of the map and the game in here. They're one game away from moving into that final series tomorrow now. And for Final Five, they're one game away from elimination from this tournament. They could be the first team definitely not going to LCS Spring Split from this thing. And they have to pick it up. Now's the time to buckle down. It's no more going for broke. But there's not much money in the bank. You got to use what you have. You get the coupons out. Yeah. That that was the. I think that was the shorter ace trick. I said, you know, are you just going to be tricky in a lane, or are you going to be tricky with your pick? And he said a little bit of both. So there was the Lulu, and I think we've we've seen that. And now they're going to go back back to champions that are that wheelhouse. In all three games, they've ran somewhat protection based strategies for prototype. Right. 
but he's not staying close to the people that can protect him. He's not. Which, and in the Vayne game, it, like we said, he wasn't the one to super hyper carry that game mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't on him to stay super protected. It was just come in at the end of the fight, deliver a cleanup. Yeah, I really do think they have to clean up a lot. Coast is playing solid more than anything, which is quite good for them. Yeah. Honestly, they have been a team that seems to tilt a little bit in very high-pressure situations, but now that they've brought in Jess as an Impaler, right. Impaler is doing the opposite of tilt. He is stepping up when the pressure is at its Super highest. Super stepping up. These last two games, he has played absolutely amazingly, and it's not only... He's doing it in a variety of ways, too, right? He's picking away shorter races Lee Sin. He's playing whatever jungler decides to come through. They're working with the bands and using yeah. picks as bands to even farther starve Final Five and put them in a more disadvantageous position. And it's worked out really well these last two games. It has worked out really well. It's surprising how well, because especially with an LCS caliber team, and not that any of these guys are like this, but you could get some people being like, I kind of want to play my champion in this game. I think I can make a really big impact. They're doing their own thing in lane, but they're all gelling super well, especially from being different regions, different metas at whatever time they really had their peak of play. But they're coming together very well, and Coast is using all of their experience to really get these wins. One more win. They will have a chance against Fusion tomorrow to get themselves back into the LCS. But this is also an elimination match, so Final Five could be going home after this, but they will be in next year's Challenger Series. We are going to have our games. I believe we're taking a quick commercial break. We'll be Got right it. back with more. It is going to be our fourth in this Best of Five Series with Coast versus Final Five.